take a minute on something though. Does this have Now it'll show us a little better which game we want to go out of. I hope I not I have not kept you waiting over long. Come now, let us look upon the water wheel of my tail. Behold the pride of our nation, Figaga's gift. She not magnificent. Countless times have I come here, yet each time I stand in awe at her sheer size and beauty. Knowing that it was born of a special bond between my grandfather and the Lala Finland builder, Elevates it to a special place in my heart. Would that they had lived to see it complete. I spoke of hardships, yes? Not days after he finished drawing up his draft for the new mill, the poor Lala fell. Hale and hardy for his age until then. Suddenly took ill. It started as a cough, soon grew dire. Within a fortnight he had passed. Without its chief builder, the ambitious project came grinding to a halt. First, there seemed no recourse but to abandon construction entirely. The daughter stepped forth, vowing that she would see her father's dream to fruition. Though none could deny her pedigree, the girl had never lifted a hammer in her entire life. Not letting this, nor the doubting words of others, deter her, she promptly enrolled in the Carpenter's Guild vowing to father, follow in her father's footsteps. People laughed. Who was this shy little girl with yellow bosom blossoms in her hair? But within a year's time, all could see that the girl was a prodigy with a hammer. In five years, she had mastered skills that would take an ordinary carpenter a lifetime. And then, her father's dream had become a reality. A shy girl with flowers in her hair had blossomed into a strong, proud woman. One of the greatest builders our realm has ever known. Such is the tale of Figaga. To think of the wonders she might still have wrought. Alas, not long after completing her gift to us, she succumbed to the same foul plague that took her father. Though she is with us no more, she remains an inspiration for the women of Gridano, myself first among them. It is here and you of the father and daughter's greatest accomplishment, that I buried their ashes and built a small monument to their memory. Once again, I thank you, Archon. The flowers you picked surely brought a smile to Figaga's face today. Now, shall we return? Yes, to the place that I named in her memory. This is why I'm doing some of these t side quests. Sometimes they're really, really cool lore stories. Learning more about this world and getting really interesting stories to do. And finding out more about what motivates people, what drives people. Things that you don't see if you just... The MSQ is great, don't get me wrong, but there's something for all these little nuggets that they hid outside of it.
Thank you for accompanying me today. I had hoped to share the tale of Figaga with you for quite some time now, having come here as you did from a faraway land. Transforming my grandfather's old storage cabin to the carline canopy you see today, I sought to carry on the spirit he showed to his Olafellan friends. The spirit of welcoming and acceptance for all who would seek shelter here, regardless of their origins. And it was in the same spirit that I came to devote my life to looking after those who would seek adventure. A fateful decision that turned out to be, yes? So it was that I came to stand behind this counter. So it was that I met you. So it was that I received the joyous tidings that you brought to me today. For you see, the letter you delivered was an announcement for the Adventurer's Guild. It would appear that I can look forward to a sizable group of new recruits in the, years to, in the days to come, and nothing could make me happier. I wanted to share the with snooze with Figaga, and with you. After all, tis in no small part, thanks to your exploits, that so many brave young and women would step forth to find succor to, to bring succor to our realm. Truly, you are a gleaming example to all. May your star shine forever bright upon us, Archon. Your successful delivery, your reputation as a letter carrier has grown. Okay. So they do seem to take up a little bit of time, but so far my interactions is do the letter carrier quests. They're actually pretty cool. That one was. Really, really interesting to do. Definitely worth your time. Main scenario quests are great, but it's not every t every story that Yoshi P and his crew wants to tell you. Ah, uh, Archon of the Scions. But I deduce from your stern expression that you have the disturbing new you have heard the disturbing news. I Garuda returns once more to plague our nightmares. I fear this incarnation of the lady is more tempestuous than aught we have yet witnessed. If you are prepared to face this rolling storm, then I will brief you on what must be done. Pleasure to see you as always, Archon. Thank you for answering my summons. Quite frankly, I could think of no one more qualified to... Ah, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Allow me to explain. A weapon coffer I don't need, and a bunch... Oh, we got our buffalo calf. So, weapon coffer I don't need because it's less than what I have. Gale Force warning. We first learned of Garuda's return when the primal fell upon the blue badgers as they sought to construct a new watchfire. The devastation was absolute. According to the report of the one surviving engineer, Garuda invoked the most horrific gale with but a gesture of her talent hand. The powerful winds tore apart the half-built tower, crushing the workers. Thank you for that wall of text, Catfax. Term puss is the root of the principal word for cat in the Romanian term psika, and the root of secondary words in Lithuanian puss and Low German pus. Some German scholars suggest that puss should could be imitative of the hissing sound used to get a cat's attention. I'm not going to read that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the report of the one
one surviving the engineer, Gerudo invoked the most horrific gale with but a gesture of her talent hand. Powerful winds tore apart the half-built tower, crushing the workers and scattering their broken bodies like dolls. Most likely it's related to... By all accounts, it appears the Lady of the Vortex has grown stronger with the summoning. She must be stopped before the casualties are allowed to pile any higher. But as you might imagine, the Exal, eager to please their bloodthirsty goddess, are engaging our troops on every front. They have not the soldiers to share for a primal hunting expedition. Thus, I sent words to the Scions to beg aid the aid of proven champions. You and your companions are our best hope for freeing Gridania of this rampaging fiend. I ask that you confront Gerda in her customary domain, the Howling Eye. Such a titanic conflict is best confined to Exali lands, wouldn't you agree? Though I imagine the Birdmen have since made adjustments to their crystal, the Beastman and the right fan within Nataland remains the surest means of entry. May the Twelve strengthen your arm, Archon. Just gotta go back to the other right. Not long ago, the Mughal Kublo Kop visited the Elder's Nest to request an audience with the Elder Seats. He spoke of an imminent, imminent threat to all of to all Mughal kind, one which would imperil the entire Twelves foot if left unchecked. You proved an able ambassador to the Sylphs, and you would have we would have you reprise the role in our dealings with the Mughals. The rest you should hear from Kublo Kopp himself. He awaits you with the elder seats here at the Lotus Stand. At his Lotus Stand. It's over by the Conjurer, right? No? Yeah, it's over by the Conjurer's Guild, that's right. Other signs have arrived, sir. May I show you in? Sure. Oh, I actually have to move in here? You have to stop them. But, but you mustn't kill them. They're not bad Mughals, Koopa. They're just misguided. A gentle, no, firm thrashing is in order. Yes, but no. Calm yourself, Kupla Cop. Can you not see that he hasn't the faintest idea what you're talking about? Be quiet this instant. Pray forgive his witless outburst, sister. Most grateful I am I that you have come, Archon, and upon such short notice. Truly, Gridania could not wish for a more stalwart ally. But you are doubtless eager to know before wherefore we summoned you. Our friend Kublo Kopp has brought to us news of a most unsettling development. It seems that good King Mughalmog the Twelfth has returned to Eorzea. Curious thing to hear, I know. Truth to tell, I myself cannot say for sure if he is a genuine figure from history, or some manifestation of Mughal mythology. Kupu here would have me believe the former. 
Once upon a time, we Moogles served the gods in the heavens. It was quite nice up there, unspeakably beautiful, unimaginably spacious, and with a literally endless supply of wine. Koopo. In spite of this, or possibly because of the last part, the gods eventually became discontented and started squabbling, which made life jolly difficult for the poor Moogles. So good King Moog Mogamog the Twelfth, may his glorious name live forever, decreed that the time had come to leave Koopo. The realm of man would suffice, he said, so all the Moogles should live there instead. Unfortunately, the two realms are so far apart that we couldn't safely fly down. But good King Mogamog the Twelfth, may his miraculous foresight ever be praised, knew exactly what to do, Koopo. He had a rope, you see, the longest one ever woven. This he nobly held while his subject climbed all the way down to the world below. And that is how we mo mo Moogles came to this land, Koopo. All of us except good King Mogomog the Twelfth. May his courageous sacrifice never be forgotten. He alone would remain in the heavens so that mo Moogle kind might at last know peace. Except that he has not remained in the heavens, from what I understand. That being your reason for contacting us, yes? Bet he tied the rope to something. Good thinking. And remind me again what the problem was with him returning to Aorzea. Problem, Ida, lies in the fact that he was summoned. It is our belief that the good King Mogamog the Twelfth is a myth, myth made manifest, via means akin to those employed by the beast tribes in the summoning of the Vigar gods. Wait, you're saying a handful of Moogles with a buttload of crystals wished really, really hard and he just sort of appeared? Did that even work? What I cannot fathom is why they would even try. With Garuda humbled and the Ultima weapon destroyed, what new threat could have prompted them to take so drastic a measure? Might that not in itself be the answer? Twice in the last decade, Ayarza has been brought onto the very drink of destruction, only to be spared at the last by the heroics of a chosen few. To you who braved those tempests and survived by virtue of your own strength, this latest period of peace will doubtless seem a welcome respite. But to those who had not the power to defend themselves, who were spared only by another's grace, this is merely the calm before the storm. I think the Mongols' guard are afraid. Afraid of what tomorrow will bring. And that things may not end so well as they did yesterday. But fear has driven them to call upon a greater power. One they believe can be relied upon to protect their loved ones. And their homes come what may. Sure you, the Mongols' guard, only want to protect the forest from outsiders. But ever since the return of good King Mogamog the Twelfth, may his boundless grace fill our parts with love, They've started to get a little carried away, Koopa. Verging on a lot, in fact. Like the sylphs who summoned Ramo, you mean? Cannot discount the possibility that this entity is influencing the Mughals in a manner similar to that of a primal. Share the same concern. Whoever, or whatever the king may be, it is our belief that he poses a threat not only to Mughal kind, but to Kadani as a whole. Thus do we beseech you, Archon. Confront good king Mughal Mog the Twelfth and drive him from our midst. Humbly, I do thank you. sanctuary of the Mughals' guard and their liege lord is concealed by magical wards. Brother Esumiyan of the Conjurer's Guild would doubtless be able to offer insight on how they might be dispelled. I seek his counsel, are you proceed any further? How do I get out of here again? This way. I 
generally going to be back here. Welcome. Now you should be the one to face good King Mogamog the Twelfth of his great comfort. To me and to the elementals both. As I'm sure you know, the Mughals are not by their nature a warlock race. Yet should the king be suffered to remain, it is like that his influence will bring about a change in them. Thus does it behoove us to defeat him quickly, before any lasting damage is done. Make whatever preparations you deem necessary, and inform me when you are ready to seek the king. Yeah, yeah, let me add him. Words barring access to the good king's sanctuary can be nullified through the use of enchanted keystones. The selfsame method employed five years ago, when the king was first summoned to Eorzea. It is with great regret that we are forced to sanction the slaying of the guardians who then held the keystones, for none are in our, were in our possession at the time. For the grace of the elementals, however, we have been spared that burden on this occasion. Kuplo Kopp confided in me that he had been entrusted with a set of keystones what the Mughals guard themselves, yet wishing not to betray their confidence, he begged me to find some other means to gain entry to the king's sanctum. Alas, I have been unable to do so, and dare not labor any longer for fear that the Mughals might succumb to the corrupting influence of their liege lord. Must needs have Kuplo Kopp's keystones, Archon. Pray go to him and beg his assistance. He awaits you at West Shore Pier. Press upon him our great need, and I am certain he will yield. What zone are you in? Ah, you're at the pier. Okay. to that. Yes. So, how you would do it, Kopo? Oh, I told you about that. Well, if there is truly no other way, I'll do it, Kopo. Take the ferry to Sweet Bloom Pier. I'll go on ahead. <laughs> 